Bros Play! Welcome back to Crackdown. The game with too many cracks and not enough down. We have been... I don't know who I just shot that at. I feel... yeah. Uh, <laughs> we have been trying to fly through this game, although you're right, it has gotten a lot harder. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't really care how quickly it goes. Like, the, we, we, don't, we haven't had a lot Oh of, no, I'm gonna die. The hell are you playing oh, that's at? Nice. The hell are you playing at? Well, I, I killed civilians. Get, I love what you- oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, no, I, okay. at first I thought he was pissed at me for dying. You fucking bitch. Get how, up. How dare you die, you son of a bitch. What do you expect? You made me! Uh, you first. made me this! <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorites, one of my favorite parodies was uh, after the third, the third of the prequel Star Wars. Uh, oh, you've done that yourself. <laughs> yeah, the scene where where Anakin and Obi Wan are talking, and the actual line is uh, Anakin says, "You've turned them against me," and then, <laughs> then Obi Wan says, "You've done that yourself." And then Jimmy Fallon did a, a parody of that, where he says, like, "You're wearing my bathrobe." And you got barbecue sauce on that. And then he responds, You've done that yourself! Wait, that was Jimmy Fallon? That was Jimmy Fallon. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Wasn't that for the MTV Movie Awards? Maybe. Yeah, I thought it was done in the same um, sort of style yeah. as the Matrix parody. The Matrix one. From 08, maybe? This door brings you back, bring Sissy Boy back to his bitch. Oh my god, that was so funny. Face of V! Concordantly! Well, there's an episode where we do that. Do we? Oh yeah. Face of V? Yeah, because I don't remember what we were talking about, but I think you said, like, a big word or something, and then I just started going all Will Ferrell on us. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the, the video he did with, like, with like a toddler? And they, they, it's, like, a little girl, and she's like, Give me my money, bitch! <laughs> He's like, Look, look, I can have it by the end of the month. <laughs> it's so funny. Give me my money, bitch. It's such a strong word. From a... I, was really, I was really thinking about it. What is the real issue with children... Like, I get... You don't want to expose children to too much violence in in movies and television, but swear words. What's the real harm? Ah, uh, because uh, that's <laughs> that's like when that's that's like the N word, where it's like it's okay to say that. It's like, but it's not okay but, to say the but, word associated with that. Yeah, and Louis C.K. has got a really great point about that. Like you you really are like words are meant for communication. If you say anything that communicates an idea, then you've communicated the idea. So at this point, you've got a word that is more powerful and less acceptable than the idea behind it. And the idea of bureaucratically and systematically enslaving an entire group of people for hundreds of years is a really powerful and fucked up thing that happened. And we seem to be more upset at just a word. That's a good point. We just got really fucking We just got political. deep, man. We got fucking deep. I think that the... The word itself carries a lot of meaning, but I think part of the problem comes in, like, you know how the, you know how a lot of people have an issue with this where, like, you can't use the word, but there's people who can. Yeah. Like, people who are disadvantaged by the word can use it. I think that's where it starts to get weird, because all of a sudden, you're reclaiming this word, but you're only reclaiming it for yourself? <laughs> yeah. Like, it doesn't, doesn't really make any sense. Like, the word... A word I say and a word you say can't have different meanings. If they have different meanings, that means we fundamentally m don't understand what communication is. And yet there are so many words with multiple meanings. On top of words, there are words, there are English words that sound like other words, spelled the same. Yeah, like nagger. Like... <laughs> Like, have you not seen that South Park episode? <laughs> I have, actually. Okay, okay. Uh, people that annoy you. <laughs> I don't, oh my I don't, god. I don't want to say it. Um... No, um, like live, live and live. Spelled the same, pronounced differently, completely different meanings. And then you've got like there and there, there, there and there. You've got all these different words spelled differently, sound differently, all these all stupid things. And then things that don't follow their own rules, like um, rover and hover. Oh. One letter difference, but you don't, you don't call your dog uh, rubber and you don't say hover. You <laughs> It's very it's true, just, that, and like pretty much everyone would agree that that's not how those things are pronounced. No. And it's so interesting that the two of us just had a conversation about a word that we didn't say, and everyone watching this will know what we're talking about. And Even though that, we never said it. That is a really interesting commentary on our society. 
so that we can speak about something without speaking about it. And um, one word that I love the way it's used by certain people, but I understand why people would have a problem with it, is faggot. <laughs> have you heard Oni, Oni cartoons use faggot? Uh, probably, yeah. Holy fuck. It's so funny. It is so funny and so obviously not intended uh, in any to sort of... Yeah, it's not intended in any sort of derogatory way. My favorite version is the Dragon Ball PP video. It's the second Dragon Ball Z um, parody that he does, where the guy's like, Daddy! And then Goku's like, No, faggot! <laughs> and then just elbows him in the face. Just knocks him away. It's, it's so funny. But there are people out there who would ignore the whole joke of the of the of of that just because it's like, Oh, that's a word. That's a word we don't use. Well, I also really like Louis C.K.'s take on it. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, what happens when the person is not being gay? They're just being a faggot. Yeah. Take, it's like, take that dick out of your mouth and stop being a faggot. <laughs> <laughs> I There's one thing Mike Tyson said. I don't know why he said it, but he's just like, I'm going to fuck you till you love me, faggot. Whoa. <laughs> That's really fucked up. Yeah, well, it's just one of those things. It's so... It's not supposed to make sense or use the word properly. It's, in fact... It's shock for the purpose of reclaiming. Yeah. You know what's interesting about CK? I haven't I haven't looked this up and confirmed it myself, but I heard from a guy who's very into stand-up uh, comedians. Um, his name is his last name was pronounced CK, even though when you look at it phonetically, it's totally different than what you'd expect. And so he cha he got so sick of it that he changed his last name to CK. So that everyone would know. Yeah, so that people would actually pronounce it correctly. So that's not an abbreviation. I don't think so. I mean, I haven't confirmed that myself, so it could be completely wrong. There's there's plenty of those weird, uh, you know, like gerbil. Um, well, did you know Mark Hamill rumors. changed his name so that Arkham would be in the middle of it? No, he <laughs> okay, did I'm not. kidding. It's just, that's how it worked. <laughs> But it's it's so easy. Like it's like, when something makes too much sense, it's almost too easy to make it seem like that was the like the goal. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I'm going. My favorite thing that I've discovered recently is uh, a, t a term coined by H three H three, ready made comedy. Uh, it's like when something is so funny you don't even have to say anything; you just show it to someone. And it's I've a good discovered term, ready -made that ready made comedy. Yeah, I've discovered it. It's very it's very um. Just apt, as you would say. It's not profound. That would be too far. But um, I, uh, I've discovered the concept more prevalently because when 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 H three says ready ready make comedy, they only have one. They show you one thing. One example. Um, but when uh, I was watching the Nostalgia Critic recently, and there's he does movie reviews, and they're usually bad movies, and so there are times where he says something, or he's he's showing the movie. Something happens, and then it just shows his face, just speechless, because he doesn't have to say anything. It's it's already funny. Like you're supposed to get what is ridiculous about what happened. Yeah, why that's funny. Like the the um, ghost dad. You remember ghost dad? Ghost dad. Yeah. It's Bill, not... Bill Cosby. No, I don't. I don't think I've seen that. You never saw that? No. That's the joke they make in Family Guy. The the Bill Cosby. Um, uh, heart rate monitor. He's like, beep, boop, bop. And he's like, bobbity, cloudy, bit of the ghost dad. <laughs> oh, I, I never picked that one up at all. Yeah. I mean, I definitely got the, the Bill Cosby EKG. That was, that was like one of my favorite family guy jokes of all time. <laughs> beep, <laughs> boop, boop. <laughs> it's just such a great, it's such a simple joke. It's not, it is. It's not even offensive. It's just, it's no. just hilarious. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, he he was doing a review on on Ghost Dad, and the the resolution for the movie is so fucking wild. <laughs> like it had to could be come up, but like a six year old must have come up with it. Like the resol like he he's not actually dead. Well, the resolution isn't how the movie ends. Yeah, yeah. Like the resolution of Ghost Dad is that he's not actually a ghost. He is, or he. He can pretend to be a person, but only in the darkness, and not in the light. And he can't grab objects unless he focuses really hard. So his objective in the movie is to pretend to be alive, to fi to go and fill out life insurance policies, so that his kids get money when he actually dies. Even though he probably, 
didn't you don't know that doors are explosive, brother? Oh. What are you even living uh. under a rock? <laughs> I mean, maybe I was the only one that didn't see that coming. <laughs> um, but like, he he could just he could just go and um, pretend to be. Wait, he could just be a ghost. Just let them know he's a ghost. He, yeah, he, yeah, that, that, that's actually a point. He's like, you could just say, "Hey, I'm a ghost," and let a scientist study you for a bajillion dollars because you're the first fucking ghost we've ever studied yeah and then maybe you'll become a real person again you yeah. don't have to pretend and then at the end he 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 bails on a meeting for a merger that would get get him net him like a huge amount of money so that he can go and help his son in a magic show for school it's like the morals of the movie are so off and at the end he's not dead he's just left his body temporarily and then, for some reason, he, in order to get his his ghost body or ghost into his body, he has to wear a a, a bunny suit. For Sorry, a week. why are you watching this terrible movie? <laughs> I'm watching Nostalgia Critic. Watch this movie. Oh, okay. So you didn't have to watch this. <laughs> no, I, that's the great thing about Nostalgia Critic, is that you get a half an hour condensed funny version of an unfunny movie. Well, that's why I really liked um, Fight Mediocrity. Because he'll, he'll maybe take somewhere between six and ten minutes, and he'll describe an entire book to you. Awesome. And it's also obviously animated, so it's way easier to digest the information. Super Bunny Hop as well. Probably my favorite Super Bunny Hop video is the evolution of Souls game level design. Mm. Of all the dark of the three Dark Souls games and Bloodborne. He never played Demon Souls, so he never he did this one in there, but it's a half an hour comprehensive comparison and description of the good and the bad things throughout the years, it would take you more than 100 hours, probably 150 hours to play them. To play all four games. When you might not even come to the same conclusions that he did. Yeah. Dude, the, oh, something I'm so impressed with, and it's something that it kind of comes into that um, that idea that the, the sequelitis um, chart that he shows, the yeah, I get it chart, where he shows how back in the 80s kids worked hard to understand what a game was and then in the early 2000s late 90s developers started to assume that people just didn't want to play their games and so you had to give them a reason to do it and then force them to play everything you've made what you mean you don't like calibrating your <laughs> look sensitivity maybe they don't know how to use the right <laughs> left thumbstick brother um and in bloodborne not only are they confident in the fact that you'll want to move forward with a very vague uh, description of your objective, in Bloodborne, eight of the eighteen levels of the of the eighteen huge levels are optional. What? You can play ten out of eighteen areas and make it through that game and complete it. Jesus. Yeah, and several of those optional eight are some of the best level designs in the series, according to uh, to George, to Georgie Boy. And that's the confidence level and the passion you have to have to make a game that may not even be enjoyed. When I first played Dark Souls 1, I thought it was a bad game because it's so well designed. <laughs> because it's so good, and I was so used to being spoon-fed video games that I thought, well, this is a terrible game. It doesn't even tell you where to go. Well, I mean, it is a terrible game in the sense that it's not a shitty game. Like, if you wanted a shitty game that force feeds you stuff and makes you do dumb things, it is a bad game. If you're, like, looking oh, yeah, for yeah, one of those yeah. kitty games. If you want a game that highlights your objective in bright yellow yeah. and only lets you move forward and <laughs> fable you, <laughs> until you press the b button to show that you know how to use the health option thank and you then, for joining us then yeah thank you for ah. interrupting me 